So we're excited to uh, have Mark Braun, who is our who is our president, um, Doug Eisenhart, who is our VP of marketing and sales, and and is over some of the engineering team. Meg Brown, who is our amazing HR leader, and then Kevin Thompson. A lot of you guys know Kevin, so. I won't give him much more of an introduction other than to say the guy wears so many hats here. Uh, first of all, COO and CFO, um, but he is also a board member at MAM and um, really inspired, uh, really was one of the main folks that inspired me to join uh, this amazing Cambridge team and culture. Um, so we've got lots of, uh, we actually have lots of questions coming in for everybody, but um, the first one actually is for Meg. Um, Meg, this is, uh, this is actually, this is a little bit from some of our friends in Kansas City actually, and they're asking, they're asking you, what is the right mix to creating what we define as a healthy work environment? And how does this help us hire and retain employees? Hey, uh, well, it's so good to be here today. Thank you so much, Tony, for emceeing and for having us and ma'am for just inviting us to participate. Um, that's a powerful question that I could probably talk about for a really long time. But if I had to um, think about key ingredients for healthy work environments, at Cambridge. It first starts with the thing we you heard us say right out of the gate today, which is to be clear about our purpose and what that purpose is beyond profits. Look, we're all in business to want to do well and to make profits, but what's the real purpose behind the business? Cambridge owning that purpose um, is really powerful in many, many ways, both inside and outside. So from a recruitment perspective, to be able to say what our purpose is to prospective employees is phenomenal because they get to join something that's bigger than them. Sometimes they've never been part of something that is so clearly bigger than them. And so to be invited into that purpose is hugely important. Um, I think the other thing we have learned over time is that fundamentally people growth and organizational health is the only way we're going to grow inside Cambridge. It's actually the way to do it and to be focused in that way. Um, and so I think that's another ingredient is to get in a place where you can really understand that and know what that means. At Cambridge, that means little things. If I think about details, what do I really mean by that? It means that we all clean the bathrooms. All of us on this screen right here are gonna be cleaning the bathrooms sometime this month. It's a way to show humility in our leadership that creates opportunities for people like Becca to do what she just did in front of all of you today. Um, it's to understand that we don't always have all the answers, but our people do, and to really believe that. And so in our recruitment process, the job is really, it's easier because I get to just shine a light on those beautiful elements that are inside this place. And I get to in, invite people into that experience, which is pretty unique and it's um, made a powerful impact. But what's funny about it, Tony, is it's not comfortable. It's comfortable in terms of it building culture, but it is, doesn't feel comfortable all the time. Cambridge is gonna want you to grow. We're gonna wanna put you in this beautiful Petri dish such that you can make phenomenal breakthroughs but sometimes it's gonna require being uncomfortable, but it is healthy, it is a healthy environment. And so those are some of the, th the key things that I think of when I think about what would the ingredients be if I were gonna be building it. And Meg, that's amazing, because being uncomfortable, and we have this conversation a lot around here, being uncomfortable doesn't mean that you can't be successful, right? No, right, if anything, it's a chance to be courageous, right? And you end up, it might not work, that's okay, um, but it can also, what if it does? Then what happens? You know, crazy stuff starts to happen. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. I actually got muted there. Thank you, Meg, for for your insight. That was that was tremendous. Um, next we're going to go to Doug. Uh, Doug again is our uh, VP of Marketing and Sales, and probably six other things that I'm forgetting to mention. But um, so Doug, I wanted to talk about our thousand virtual tours goal here because we have this amazing and awesome goal of engaging. A thousand virtual tours here at Cambridge uh, in this fiscal year, which ends for us in October. Um, what what I would love for you to talk to the audience about is what is the value of having virtual or in person tours here at Cambridge? You know, for those that um, aren't in the sales funnel for us already, or for a sales funnel for any company in general. Well, I I think the um, you know as we turn the corner from January and February last year. Um, we were always trying to get more people to come see us, whether they were coming here to uh, experience our culture or for customers to look at our equipment for projects that they were considering for their facilities. And uh, whenever we had a chance to meet with people face to face in a tour here at Cambridge, some kind of magic happened that they got to see who we were. 
They got to feel our heart for our care for what, what facilities could do to impact people working. They got to see an engaged uh, workforce here um, that somehow feels different than many, many other places that we go um, with people that are really engaged and they're on fire for doing great work. And um, when our customers could come see us, um, they could see our passion and care that goes into the manufacturing of our equipment. And so reliability, quality, serviceability, uh, the passion that goes into making each piece of equipment. I remember years ago when I first started, there was a young man that signed the burner, uh, like he was signing a Rolls Royce engine um, that you might see in a, a supercar. And you know that to me was eye-opening because I knew that there was deep care for uh, what we were making um, at the job, at the point that, you know, screws were being turned or wrenches were being torqued. And so that 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 left an impression as we went through this COVID situation where we couldn't travel anymore and nor could our customers come see us. We said we have to double down on bringing people here virtually in a meaningful way that they could experience our culture, but they could also see our platforms. They could actually deep dive into our equipment and somehow connect with people um, that are that are working on this equipment for longevity in, in their facilities. So a thousand visitors may be um, a light goal now. It might be undershooting it a bit, um, but we've got a flag in the ground and we're trying to get better at um, creating a virtual experience whereby people can come see us. Um, we've also pointed our entire web experience at trying to attract virtual visitors. And ultimately we wanna turn this facility into a virtual sandbox or demonstration for any manufacturer that's considering changing their environment with their HVAC system. So we've got a lot of work to do. We're at the front end of it, but um, we're making progress and we're excited to be here today. So thank you everyone for visiting us. Thank you so much, Doug, and, and we'll be back to you because we have a bunch of questions about our morning meetings too, so we'll come back to you on that. Um, so next, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll save Kevin and pick on him last, uh, but uh, Mark, you actually have a question from Ken Talley at uh, True Manufacturing over there in St. Peter's. Um, tremendous. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, Cambridge is well known for their enriching lives culture. Um, what he asks is, what challenges have you faced during the pandemic that have impacted your team's culture and how have you maintained and improved the culture during this time? Well, it's a great question. Um, I mean, COVID has impacted everybody around the globe. And uh, if challenges are what makes us stronger, uh, there's definitely a chance and opportunity for that through COVID. I just want to shout out to the other manufacturing companies in Missouri. Um, without you side by side with us over this last 12 months, uh, we could never have been as strong uh, and as ready for what comes next. And so I think the manufacturing community as a whole is, is just an, a group of unsung heroes. And uh, I think about Missouri, uh, for some reason, our story as manufacturers in Missouri is stronger than we could ever share. And so I think about that, that was true two years ago, it was true last year and it's true now. And so I just really appreciate uh, the manufacturing community and how we lift each other up and we help tell the stories of what it can feel like inside of our facilities um, because there's an incredible storyline there and all we've got to do is share it. And so it's really cool to, today to be able to share a little bit. I mean, I think that uh, COVID hit and uh, we had been through enough at Cambridge. We went through the flood of 93, which had 14 foot of water uh, from floor to ceiling inside of Cambridge and moved the whole facility and met client needs. And then we went through 2008, which almost crippled the whole organization. We went 90% uh, drop in core market year over year and the team rallying through those and the people that had been there for a long time knew that even when we were coming into this that uh, we could get through it and we could grow through it and so i just think about how uh, amazing it is to see the folks on the front line uh, frontline leaders uh, supervisors all the way up through the the ranks to be able to come and, and make quick changes uh, we put a team in place right early on uh, 
day one basically of the challenge uh, that was cross-functional and it was designed to keep our people safe. Our number one priority was zero transmissions person to person. We knew that if we lost the battle against COVID, we would lose our ability to help our clients. So we had to keep safety number one. The second was cash was really important. And if we lost continuity on cash, we couldn't keep employed. And I can tell you that 12 months in, we kept every single person employed. And I, I will tell you, I know it didn't happen for everybody. I know it's not a one size fits all, but I'm so proud of the team for the work there. Uh, they suffered together. They said it was more important to suffer together than to uh, lose anyone. So they did that. And then lastly, as we watched for opportunities for growth and change uh, across the organization. And I mean, I think about this tour right here. Our first virtual tour was about 30 days in. Uh, we had been opening up our doors because people had generously paid that to us. And so we paid that forward to open our doors and we've been inviting people in. We've had 5,000 manufacturing leaders come in over the last five years. And, and I, we, we just said, said, how can we do it? How can we do it in a different way? People were signed up and they had to cancel. And we said, can you come in virtually? And so the today is just a, a demonstration of what it looks like if you keep on innovating and growing through that. So really, really elated to be here, Tony. Um, thanks for the opportunity. And thank you all of your manufacturing leaders uh, who are working every day to make it a safe place, continued operations and grow through this thing together. Mark, that's terrific. Thank you for uh, giving us a little bit of the background here at Cambridge and and uh, and and really Talk, taking us on that journey. It's uh, it's tremendously important, and um, and you'll you'll hear Mark uh, speaking around the country at, at at other events, and I encourage you to uh, to to engage Mark and and ask him any question. I, I've yet to see him be uncomfortable, so we'll get him there. Um, <laughs> next up, I wanted to talk to Kevin Thompson, and and Kevin, you know, you have the unique perspective of wearing two C level roles here at Cambridge as our COO and CFO. Um, just a couple of months ago, Cambridge announced an expansion into a new facility and major investment into our current facility. Uh, with the unique year of 2020 and what COVID has dealt us, uh, what factors did you have to weigh in deciding that it was time for Cambridge to continue to push forward and stick to our strategic plan um, and, and, and continue to grow? Well, thanks, Tony. It's great to be here, everybody. Um, the problem with going last with this group is all my colleagues are so stinking smart. I'm not sure how how I'm going to show on this one, but I'll do my best. Uh, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that COVID reminded us is that, you know, fear, we can't be crippled by fear and uncertainty. And I can remember, I share the story, you know, I can remember back in mid-March when all this hit and I'm a warrior by nature. I probably wouldn't be a CFO if I wasn't wired that way. And uh, I can remember some sleepless nights where I just, in my mind, everything was shutting down. Cash flow was disappearing. You know, bank borrowing was, capacity was going away. There was just, every bad thing was going through my mind. And uh, once I got over that, took a couple of naps and, and, and got better. Um, you know, I think as an executive team, we just realized that nothing about COVID changed our growth strategy. In fact, if we were smart and, and we stayed focused and, and did things well, we would be growing um, when others might be retrenching. And so I think it was just being along with other leaders that didn't show fear and reinforced me that, that I didn't need to be fearful, that we could just put our heads down and continue to grow. And so the Wentzville facility is, is a, a big launch out of that. It's, uh, we have a strategic objective here to always have operational capacity at least 20% ahead of what our revenue team believes the best case they can sell the following year is. And so that's, you know, it can be hard. And so uh, Wentzville is, is one of a number of strategies around making sure that, that we fill that. Um, coming out of it, it's, it's really neat. I've learned so much in my leadership about um, breaking out of that fear and, uh, and just seeing how beautiful it was for everybody to be able to rally around that growth, even in the midst of all that uncertainty. And, you know, now as we're slowly coming out of it, who knows what the future holds to just be able to celebrate our growth and our continued um, success. We had a we had a rough year. It wasn't what we thought it was going to be, but it was certainly better than I thought it was going to be in March. And um, we get to celebrate that. So that's fun. That's great. Yeah, it, for those of you that uh, don't know Kevin, I also encourage you to to reach out. He is uh, he's a tremendous guy, resource, and and 
and somebody that uh, wears a servant heart like the rest of our leadership team. So we are we are truly appreciative for your time, Kevin. And um, with it, with only a few minutes left, um, there's a few ways that we could go here. But what we have we've become really well known for our morning rhythms and our morning meetings that we hold on a daily basis here uh, Monday through Friday. And um, Doug, I think we're going to pitch this back to you, um, and, um, knowing that we only have a couple minutes left, but. Um, can you talk to can you talk to the MAM audience about why we have that morning rhythm and what that does uh, for the culture here and and how it contributes to each and every employee's day? Yeah, I just I actually sent an email out to the group um, over the weekend about this topic. Um, our morning meeting has been, um, I'd say it's been a day starter for me. It's been a mindset. Um, framer for me and I know it is for for many others as I've talked a lot uh, to our, our teammates about it but um, you know getting your day started well um, like so many other rhythms that we have in our life our, this this daily rhythm for us has become an important one uh, inside the Cambridge family and um, I know it wasn't always this way but it starts it starts with um, grateful appreciation uh, at the end of a, a, a brave MC that shares from their heart whatever they want to talk about that day. But starting our days with grateful appreciation just um, uh, for me, it changes my mindset. I might be wrestling with something just as simple as I'm, I'm late for getting my son to school that could wreck my interactions with uh, my own teammates. And so the recentering of our morning, re recentering of my mind around the morning meeting is uh, is impactful for me. There's so much that goes on in our morning meeting, um, and it it is. Uh, if you haven't attended one, please you can join us. It's easy to join us, and I think uh, we have some easy ways to plug into that. We would love for you to join us, and we would love to attend any morning meetings that that you're having as well, so that we can continue to carry great ideas back to ours. That's how ours got started, and ours has evolved with ideas from other places. So. Um, a morning meeting experience is a great investment of 15 minutes of time that um, it just it can it can change your mind it can change your mindset for a productive day. That's awesome. Thank you, Doug. And I've been gifted a couple more minutes because I want to hear from Meg again. Um, uh, Meg, can you talk about, I know that we have just really started breaching this and we have some great software that helps us with the topic of virtual onboarding, but a lot of manufacturers are put in a position now to virtually onboard new employees, um, executives, all the way up and down the line. Is there any, do you have any um, input into this subject and what you're hearing around uh, the HR community? Yeah. I think it is something that we've had to figure out pretty quickly. Um, in Cambridge's case, our plant was working in person through COVID. So a lot of our hiring was actually for in-person work. And so much of our onboarding didn't necessarily change due to COVID. Um, but we had already done the hard work before that to get any process that could be done before the first day of employment is completely facilitated digitally through our HRIS program, which for us, that's a company or a, a platform called Paylocity. And there's a big shift in the HR space to leverage technology to reach your people. Um, in some cases, it's it beyond onboarding. It's if any time I needed to be able to reach everyone all at once, it's been in 2020 in this COVID time um, where I had to be able to instantaneously communicate with all 160 employees without doubting whether they heard me or not. And we in manufacturing, that can be hard if you don't give email addresses or you're not set up to have even machines to check email for all your employees and our HRIS has provided that platform, which has been really, really helpful um, to just be able to know that we can reach our people with important messages in their phones and, and be able to, to get to them. Um, I think the onboarding experience, what's really important about it is that the things that can be done by technology are, and the things that can't, you find a way to make it as personal as possible um, and if it can be in person, we try to go for that. In our environment, that means maintaining six feet, social distance, and wearing masks. But it doesn't mean that you can't still communicate warmth and connection and all of those things. You just got to work a little harder. Got to learn how to smile with your eyes. <laughs> you got to do some things like that that, are, that help make it feel, um, I guess, warmer despite 
what COVID makes us do and put some barriers between us. And you know firsthand, Tony, because we onboarded you during COVID. And so you had probably a blend of both the virtual interaction with us and then the in-person. Um, so I think it's, it is something to try to figure out for your organization, but some elements of it are never gonna be able to be done virtually, in my opinion. I agree. That's that, that's terrific. Actually, th this morning's uh, this morning some of the questions were around this, and I thought, you know, who better to ask than you? But yeah, the onboarding process for me was a little bit of a hybrid process. Um, but you know, one of the big things that I've seen on our morning meetings and our slides is that we protect this house. A little bit of a borrowed slogan from Under Armour, um, but it's true. I mean, we protect this house. Our leadership team has has been um, exceptional in making sure that the messaging is is constant and that the cadence is, hey, wear your mask and uh, and let's and let's let's still keep our culture, but you got to wear your mask and um, zero transmissions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we're very proud of that number here, and um, and we are just uh, we're thrilled to be able to hear from our four panelists today. Um, again. You know, as as we as we kind of wrap this up, one of the some of the some of the asks, I guess, on our end is that um, if there's anything we can do to enrich your life as a manufacturer, um, in, including phone calls and, and emails and and all of the things that we do, um, we would love to have anyone in that wants to tour. Um, you can you can look at us for our lean tour, a product tour, or even one where you can be a fly on the wall or say what you want in our morning meeting rhythms every day. Um, at 8:30, and and I think that you know when you talk about what what's been most important to me and in, in my journey at Cambridge, which is only a few months along, it's it's the it's the communication. I think one is uh, there's transparency at every level and um, what we do here. And when people ask, well, what makes that place so successful? We keep hearing about Cambridge. I said, you know, it's not just innovation because that's pretty obvious in how we how we market and how we. Um, communicate to other people, but the communication from top to bottom and the empowerment of our employees by our executive team, these four people that you see here, um, no matter who you are or what your role is at Cambridge, you're treated as an equal. And I think that um, I think when it's hard to find middle ground these days anywhere, you always know you can stop. And, and, and when you get to work at Cambridge, that middle ground exists and you get to do with it as you want to do with it. And we will and we will support you. So um, with that being said, and uh, there are quite a few other questions, but I'll get those to you guys uh, once once we're off of here and we can maybe answer them through the MAM forum. Um, you know, I'm truly appreciative for the time that you guys have spent with us. I know getting all four of you guys together is, 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 is always a, is a want and a desire. We don't always get it, but today we did. And, and I know the folks at Missouri Association of Manufacturing are truly appreciative as am I.